Hi, this is Gabriel Castro from ExoticWoodPen.com. In this video, I want to talk about fountain pens, why I got started in fountain pens. And uh, it's a question I get periodically uh, when I run into some people. Um, anyway, uh, got tired of doing the same old kit pen thing, even though I still like kit pens, don't get me wrong. Um, and of all the kit pens out there, I think um, that my two favorite kit pens that I've made a lot of different types were the, um, the Cigar Pen and the Sierra. But going to the fountain pens, uh, you had a lot more freedom to do a lot of different things, a lot more creativity. If you wanted to do that with a kit, you know, you, you were limited to, to what the kit or how the kit was made. And let me sort of expand on that, is that when I was at a show one time in uh, Claremont, it was one of these big village ventures. If you're from the Inland Empire area, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, there was a particular show with all these artists, hundreds of artists there, and um, it was an evening show. And probably about, um, 10 or 12 different pen turners there and the majority of all the pen turners and all great great pen turners they all had really cool looking stuff but 90 percent of everything they had were those uh, bullet click pens you know the uh 30 caliber or whatever they are and you know when you go to one booth after the other and they all have the same thing you kind of go, you know, and it was all guys, you know, selling, you know, hopefully other to get to guys also. And that's cool, you know, if you work around a military base or something like that, uh, where that's a good market for for that sort of a thing. But, you know, when you have that many people selling the same thing, sort of lose interest. And, uh, you know, they were there trying to undercut everybody else's prices. Some of the guys had like $15 price tags on their stuff. It's like, why even bother? You know, that's not even worth your time. So when you see that sort of a thing, you know, and that's the one downside of kits is when they're so repetitive where all you can do is change the wood or the acrylic out, there really isn't a lot of uh, flexibility there. But when you go bespoke, so when you can make the, pit, the, the pen, the fountain pen, or even a bespoke pen, a uh, rollerball pen, you have the, all the control to be able to make that pen look or do what you want. You don't, you're not limited to a, a kit, you know, the length or the shape or the size. So that's where bespoke pen making comes in. And um, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here I'm at my table saw. And I use my table saw as a workbench now since, I, since my back surgery. This is a cigar box, and this is what I use for my, um, my displays. This is one that I had a client give me. Now, this is a wooden one, of course, but it's really warped, so it's not good for cigars because it's just a big gap, and the inside is pretty decorative. So as when you're selling pens, you got to do what you can. I, I didn't use all the stand-up displays and all that. The cigar boxes were easy because you know you could lay your pins inside there and uh, packing just flip it over throw it in a box and you're done so anyway that's what I do but um, one of the first pins that I did that I'm gonna say this is a semi kitless pen this was actually an El Grande pen kit that was a segmented pen and just running down that uh, rabbit hole of um, a closed end pen. This is what got me on the um, fountain pen journey. Now, this is a decent little pen, but I did this in ancient Kari, and in my mind, I thought this would have been really cool. But in, in actuality, when I look at it afterwards, uh, this is just ugly and boring, and this is uh, pretty embarrassing to show. And, you know, just learning how to do segmenting and whatnot. Uh, 
not a very good example and I think this is the first time it's seen daylight in a long time. Second kind of a semi kitless pen. This is all black acrylic. The clip is for a 50 caliber bullet uh, pen kit. And that was uh, kind of like my idea thinking, oh, this would be really cool. In my mind, another one of those cool ideas. Uh, when I actually did it, uh, not so cool. This is the half inch single start thread on the inside. This is a copper, um, a piece of copper that I bought, a half inch. It was a solid piece of copper, drilled it out and tapped it to fit both inside and out. And this is also from an El Grande. And, um, you know, I used this pen for quite a while before I decided to actually take the full leap. And this was a really comfortable pen to write with. Fairly lightweight, even though it's a big, a weighted uh, piece of copper in there. Uh, good practice piece, good, good thing to cut my teeth on. Um, really long on the bottom, though. Um, you know, it's, it's average. Another pen that I made was this ebonite one. Now, before I can get here, this was a uh, clip from a, um, a kit pen. I forget exactly what kit that came off of. Trying to do that in there. Uh, not that great. Uh, this was the first attempt at a section and a no-name nib on there. Um, this one was a was kind of a challenge to do. Learned a lot. That's really way too long. A lot of threading. This is a half inch, half inch single start thread using Harbor Freight uh, tap and dies to make this. And you can see how long that cap is. That's like a half inch way too long. And the body was another half inch way too long. Learned a lot from that. I went through two feet of ebonite. This is black uh, ebonite here. Went through two feet of ebonite to make this pen. And uh, what a challenge. Uh, ugly, good learning experience though. Let's see. Okay, then I think I made, uh, I gravitated over to this one here. This one is an all acrylic, except for the, uh, I used white wood veneers for segmenting strips. Um, brass clip uh, screwed on the outs or screwed in on the um, exterior like that. This one was in one of my segmenting videos, part three. And um, single start thread, half inch. Um, I really liked the way this particular pen came out, but um, nowhere near quite right. The finish, it, you can you can see that it's not as crisp as far as the lines go. That was from the veneer. I uh, should use plastic, but it was a good learning experience and I really liked this particular pen. Uh, four different types of um, acrylic used on this one. So this one was a cool pen to make. Good fun turning learning experience. Then I made this one here for my wife. Now, like I said earlier, uh, you can do, do it with a fountain or a roller. This one is a roller. This one uses a, uh, a roller uh, from a cigar pen. And that just goes in there. The section is just a solid section right there like that. It fits right in there. I've got a small piece of a, a, a wood on the inside instead of a spring to keep the tension on that. So when that screws in, it keeps that from, uh, from bouncing out. So really, really good pin, but, and I threaded the back end because uh, I thought, oh, let's make this one postable, right? So that's a half inch th single start thread on the back that posts on the back. But when you start to write with it, you realize that's really long. So kind of a, Again, in my mind, I thought it'd be a good idea, and in practicality, uh, not so much. 
wife doesn't even like it. It just sits on the sits on the on the bar. So, but whenever I get a chance to use it, I use it. Then I made this particular one. Uh, this one was a cool pen. Joe number six nib. I went into a uh, the Joe nibs fine. This one's a stainless steel finish. This one has a plunger on the back. So this one has a built-in refill system and it works off of, uh, now I, I could never get it to work exactly quite right. And anyway, um, it works off, off of vacuum, but it's kind of a cool pen the way it came out. But um, I would have thought in my mind, this would have been a really cool looking pen. Oh, this is also a double start uh, tap and die that I used for the cap and body. Uh, when I bought the blank, I thought, oh, this would have been, this would have looked really cool. And this uh, tortoise shell, after I turned it down, uh, not so much. So I used this for a little while and then couldn't wait to make something else. This one here is a uh, double start German uh, Cumberland Ebonite. Joe number six nib, solid gold, uh, gold uh, colored Rosetta number six nib. Um, this one here, uh, you unscrew the tail, and um, if I had the uh, the piece in here, I thought I did. You know, when you unscrew the cap or the section, this is where your refill system would be on the inside right here. So instead of having to unscrew the section all the time and risk getting your fingers dirty by touching this right here, you unscrew the back end, that will expose the cartridge converter to fill that up. You just backspin it and it uh, suctions the, uh, the ink out of the bottle for you. That works out pretty good. Um, Clip again is made from the 50 caliber bullet. You've seen the videos on that, I'm sure. If you haven't, check out my YouTube videos on how this pen is made. This one is, uh, again, German Ebonite. Uh, this one is Double Start Tap and Die, gold, gold colored nib, Rosetta number six, fine. But this one, if you haven't seen this one here, unscrew this the, off the tail end. Very similar to the way this one is made. But this one has a 64 gig USB flash drive built into it. It uses a single cartridge refill here. Unscrew the section. That pops in there like that. It's not fully engaged, so it's still brand new. And again, 50 caliber uh, cartridge used on making the brass clip. This particular steampunk pen I made a while ago, um, two-tone nib. I bent this nib on a different pen. I put it on this one. Uh, it's a fine nib. You, there's a video I showed where I actually repaired this one. Pen actually works great, um, but I replaced it with a different pen that I make. This one was a personal use of mine uh, for a while, a Schmidt refill system. But this one had a lot of air bubbles. I didn't cast it under pressure, you know, so I'm still debating whether or not to, to give this one an acetone bath. But this one came out really long on the body and probably about three-eighths of an inch too long on the cap. So proportionately, I'm not thrilled with it. So I remade it uh, a different way. And you can see the, um, the length um, is probably a little more, about five-eighths of an inch total length difference from one pen to the next. So this one here was the last, one of the last ones that I made. I made this one for the St. Louis Pen Show for 2019. 
Um, this one is steampunk carbon fiber, black Japanese ebonite. You can sort of see the carbon fiber. It's kind of uh, hard to see there, but you can see it there in the section and there under the cap. So 18 nibs used. This one is a triple start tap and die. If you want to get started in uh, custom pen turning and looking into uh, taps and dies, custom taps and dies, uh, Chad Schimmel, Turner's Warehouse. That's where I bought the triple starts. You don't have to wait to get involved in a group buy. Just go to Chad Schimmel, Turner's Warehouse. He'll take good care of you. So, and everyone knows he has a great reputation. So be sure to support your uh, fellow pen turners. But anyway, uh, again, very similar to this one, this one here that I just showed you, um, 10 nibs on the top, eight on the bottom. I didn't clutter it up with all the gears, kept it kind of clean and simple. So black Japanese ebonite, but I think this was one of the last ones that I made that was a full bespoke pen kit. But anyway, that's where I'm at with uh, bespoke pens. I don't make very many. Oh, you know what? Let's show you this one here. I did a segmented one, a clear one thinking, oh, this would be really cool. Uh, no, you can see I got a crack right there. Um, I tried doing clear thinking, oh, this wouldn't be that difficult. Uh, I don't have the patience to uh, sand it all out and everything on the inside, you know, with uh, the type of stuff that I have to work with. I just, you know, not into it. So anyway, it sort of was looks cool in theory. And uh, this is just one of those pens that I never got that far with. So, but... You get the basic idea when it comes to uh, bespoke pens and, you know, getting away from kit pens. There's a lot more flexibility to do with what you want, you know, especially with like USBs or steampunking or whatever. So, you know, uh, it's all art. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it. And uh, some of the guys out there really come up with some amazing stuff. But anyway... Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Have a great day.